Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, please do me a favor and subscribe. Would really help us out. Thank you so much. Now let's get to that interview. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actress Celia Al with me. So welcome, Celia. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I, I was, we were chatting offline about the uh, weather and I was like, well, I need to just shut up and get this thing started. Well, yeah. <laughs> put you to sleep before we even start. Terrible, terrible. So thank you so much for doing this. I was so excited to get a chance to, uh, to talk with you and I want to talk about the new movie. But before we do that, tell me a little bit about what got you started into acting. Why would you want to become an actor? Well, I actually studied uh, advertising and marketing, nothing, <laughs> the acting field whatsoever. And uh, I said this a couple of times, but uh, I, I took a, an acting 101 class in the business school and I was like, I'm going to get an A, you know, help my GPA up a bit. Yeah. And by the end of the semester, I was asking the professor, I was like, well, how does, how does an actor make money? It just doesn't make sense to me, right? And he was like, well, if I know, I, I wouldn't be teaching here. And that motivated me to go, I want to find out how actors made money. Yeah. Uh, and like, you know, I was like, I think a lot of this? people want to know that. I, I still, I'm, I still want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like doing research, I, I start like, you know, talk, like, talking to people, meeting fellow like other actors. And luckily, you know, a lot of people have like guided me and introduced me to people um, and like that's how I landed like my first manager and I didn't know how to act for the life of me I was I did a bunch of music videos at first and then I did some commercials and then I moved on to like then took acting classes and then film and tv but uh ultimately I just think like I realized the reason why I want to get into advertising was I went to um the museum of film no of radio and television when I was in school yeah and they were talking about how like a 30 second ad has a lot of subliminal messaging and like changing people's perspective or like a jingle can kind of in a way brainwash someone in the in the 90s and 80s when you hear like a horse running through like you know pavement or whatever you automatically think of Marlboro you know yeah. or you That's automatically true. think of cowboy like cool cowboy and what's so whatnot and I was like this is so interesting because I was like that's like a superpower you get to have in the 30 <laughs> second spot you can you can influence someone's mind, you know, and kind of brainwash them so, a little so bit. So you went like straight to the super villain type of oh, thing. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but but I was going to use that power for good, right? Oh, okay, like, okay. What do you need to do in thirty seconds to to make people feel like more positive about life and happier, and you know, and I was like, commercial makes you feel like you want to buy stuff, right? So it makes you feel good. Yeah. Um, and then I realized that, oh man, there's, there's a lot of like corporate ladders and stuff and in, in like, you know, the advertising agency. And I was working as a graphic designer as I was acting as well. And I was like, mm, well, in acting, you can actually tell a whole story about someone's background and nope. it's for the audience to experience what it's like to walk in the shoes of these characters. So I was like, oh, that is even cooler because it's like a superpower of changing someone's perspective if, if you know, the project is successful and you can get a wide audience, right? And I love that about storytelling. I feel like we all need a little bit more love and empathy in the world, especially right now. And Great. that's when I was like, oh, I want, I want to act. You know, I want to do these different things. And like when I was a kid, I want to be like, I want to be a police officer, a lawyer, a firefighter, Power Ranger. And then I was like, well, I can't do that in real life, but I can do that as an actor. So I was like, that will be a lot of fun, you know, dipping into like the different characters and experiencing their lives a little bit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like now I feel like, you know, making good films and telling stories with different perspective can can help people, you know, open up their minds sometime and, and like and have people feel more empathy towards one another, which I think is very important. And that's a superpower in in uh, film and television. Yeah, I've never heard it described that way. But I completely agree with that. That's really good. If if you had an actual superpower, what would it be? Oh my God. If I teleportation, 
So then I can teleport to different countries for lunch and dinner and I can like experience different cuisines without flying like 16 hours sometimes. Yes, or having to have like a passport and just all the stuff. You could just go, just pop into, you know, you could have dinner in France and I don't know, yeah, breakfast in somewhere I really else. Want French cuisine tonight. Let's just go to Paris. Paris. <laughs> I like I like your thinking. Forget using it for for any reason other than travel. I'm in. Well, I can also save people, right? If I can teleport people, if there's like a disaster zone, I can like hopefully you know save as much people as possible and kind of evacuate them. That's, That's true. That's or you could charge like an insane amount of money just to teleport people to places that they want to go and let them save time. That is true. That would be a really good business model. Man. <laughs> if you invented teleportation, I'm pretty sure you're going to do okay. <laughs> Just a guess. Well, so, okay. So did, did you do, because that's kind of a late start into acting. Did you do theater or anything through school, like through high school growing up? Um, in high school, I took a, a, like, you know, drama class. And then I was in part of high school sing. Do you know what that is? Um, is that kind of like a uh, show choir? It's kind of like boogie club, but instead oh. sing is like each grade, like, you know, like freshmen and sophomores are together and then juniors and uh, juniors is in their own group and seniors in their own group. They write like a musical together in that group Ooh. and then they perform Ooh. it like a little piece. And then uh, like the grades compete. So like which grade wins? Of course, when we won. <laughs> of course. Uh, but I wasn't acting. I was like dancing in it. And I was like, ah, I'm too shy to act. And I'm like, oh, this looks kind of cool. And uh, I remember like my high school that I went to, a lot of people were like studying acting and stuff. And I'm like, what is that? My parents would never let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so when you decided you wanted to check acting out and you started doing some music videos, is that what you were doing? Were you dancing? Um, I was usually the cool kid. So uh, I used to support like this, like kind of full hook. And Ooh. that's how like people got to know me, at least around New York, right? I was like, oh, in marketing, marketing 101, you know, they're like, how do you make yourself stand out? And I was like, well, I think with like, you know, a different kind of style, definitely I'll be memorable. If I'm good or not, that's a different story, right? But I'm at least memorable. So yeah. <laughs> I started getting music video because you're just like trying to act cool or whatever. There's not a lot of like, real in-depth acting with dialogue and stuff so in the beginning that was like things that I was booking because I'll be honest I was not the best actor in the world when I started I probably sucked <laughs> and then I took more acting classes and get to know more about characters and yeah. Yeah. I so think like that's that probably what's been holding me back I need a like faux hawk if I had that, you need that faux hawk, Michael oh my gosh see back in the 80s I had like the hair, you know, like the perfect 80s hair and I hated it. All I was, I always just, I was like, I just need to get rid of this. It's a pain in the butt to take care of. And then one day it just left. And now I'm like, man, I wish I had that hair back. I could do some stuff with it now. <laughs> I want to see a picture of you in the 80s. I have a, I have a, I have a feeling you have that like full on Dragon Ball haircut when it's like, big and oh, like spicy they, and see i should have i should have had that but i had more of the like um this is this is dating myself so you may not get the reference but more like a sean cassidy type of feathered hair look you know it was, it was kind of big but kind of you know like like since that okay okay you know like i used to use this brush that was i'm pretty sure supposed to be used on horses but you could just go <laughs> just one time and it would be boom I'll send you some pictures. Yes, please. Do. You can send me some of, of your, your faux hawk and I'll send you some of the 80s. I'm sure if you type in my name, that's like some of the first pictures that will come out. Oh, I probably <laughs> will. It probably, it, the, the reverse is not true. I'll have to send them to you. <laughs> so what was your what was your first like speaking role? What when you when you finally decided, okay, I'm gonna try to do something where I have to talk. What was the first one? My first speaking role was on this film called Detachment. And it was me and James Kahn. Oh and my gosh. Yes. No pressure. A, no pressure at all, right? He was like, 
hi honey so back in the day when we're doing the godfather and i'm like yes sir hi sir how are you that's doing, the sir? correct <laughs> answer <laughs> He was super nice. Uh, he was, like, he was oh, also yeah. an elf, though, so that may that softened him up a little. Yeah, he was like, "You might, honey, you might know me more as, uh, you know, the character in Elf." And I was like, "Actually, you never watched Elf, but Godfather." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Godfather's the, the movie. I remember. He's like, also, he's he's in a movie. You won't know this one. Maybe you will, but he was in a western called El Dorado. Oh, mm -mm. with John Wayne. John Wayne. That's how. That's. It also had Ed Asner playing the bad guy. It is a fantastic movie. You need to look that one up. And he okay. was young. He was young in that one. Probably, you know, probably just probably one of his first roles. Wow. Yeah. He was like telling me that how like he's like, oh, you know, I don't know how you guys do it right now. Back in the day, he told me a lot of stories that day about back in the day. And I'm like, oh man, sounds like you guys had like so much more fun. He was like, oh, yeah, you know catering was different everything was different <laughs> so how did you get that role because that seems like a big role if you're acting opposite james Kahn. Uh, i auditioned for it actually um at that time i was like doing more commercials and a commercial yeah. director a uh, casting director put me up for it and then i read for a different part then i got called back for another different part and uh and then i met the director at the final callback and then I booked this this part. the car, The part was named Ellen. The character's name Ellen. And I mean, she that's was like, amazing. School and James James Com was like the dean, and he was like, "You can't dress like this in school, Ellen," because I'm like super sexy, and I'm like, "Yeah, I don't give a shit." Blah 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 blah. And he's like, "Watch your mouth." <laughs> <laughs> Did you still have you know the hair? Yes, I had that hair. That was like. All right, I'm looking it up. Yeah. And we'll look it up. See, so so for me, the what I remember the first things that I saw you in, because I'm geeky, was like you were like a henchwoman in Gotham for, for Zaz, right? But you also showed up in Iron Fist. So you got like Marvel and DC. <laughs> Man, I need I need I need a bigger part in both the Marvel and DC universe. You yes, know? you do. Like super villain or something. Maybe one that teleports. Yes, and mind control. <laughs> Yes, we need a we need a good mind control villain. I think in either universe. I think it's hard, right? Once you have like a mind control like villain that can actually do a lot, it's like no one else can can beat them. They can change. Oh, who's a uh, um uh? Oh my God, what's that show on on Marvel? Are you Jessica Jones? No, Elizabeth. Uh, oh, um, you're talking about Scarlet Witch, the uh, oh, Wonder yeah, Vision. She, she can come, like you know, change people's minds, change and reality stuff. and stuff. Yeah, you know, and it also like um, the David Tennant played the Purple Man on Jessica Jones, which was another Netflix Marvel show. But he he had a mind control power. Yep. So there you go. But yeah, I thought you were kind of badass as the uh, henchwoman on Gotham. I thought that was really good. Thanks. And it was, was a couple awesome. episodes on that one, I think. Yeah, I did three episodes on that. Yeah, yeah. And That's look pretty... where that is at. Anthony is uh, Barry. He's on Barry right now as oh Milho Hank. Love Barry. And it just came back out last night. I haven't watched the new one yet, but we'll probably watch that tonight. Nice. <laughs> that was a long gap for season three. Well, there's the pandemic. Come on. Yeah, I know. I know. Did you, so during, when you were in lockdown, what did you do? Did you, did you write? Did you pick up an instrument? You know, what'd you do with your time when we were all locked in? Well, I try to do everything. I, uh, I have a, actually a keyboard right now in front of me and a, and a guitar, but I'm not good with either. <laughs> uh, I tried, I tried to learn for a little bit and then I was like, I gave up and then I started cooking and I was like, oh, okay, this is fun. And then I just eat too much. And I was like, I should probably not cook as much. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I we was went through of, that. Yeah. And then I started doing a lot of uh, panels for charity. And because there's like the Asian hate stuff that was going on. And yeah. you know, I was doing like talks for different companies and organizations about, you know, my perspective of things and how we can like work together and stand in solidarity. I think that's, that's pretty great because what we needed during a pandemic was just a bunch of intolerance. That was perfect. 
you know, know. God forbid we just, you know, love our neighbors and try to help everybody, but okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, we need to promote more love and empathy in this world. It just seems like, I was like, where did it all go? Like my yeah. parents used to tell me that back in the day, like neighbors will help each other. And now sometimes you don't even know who your neighbors are. No, I think I, it, it, that's the way I grew up. You know, it was, you know, I, you lived in a neighborhood. Everybody in the neighborhood raised all the kids together. You know, it didn't matter whose house you were at. Everybody was, you know, somebody was watching you. You knew all your neighbors. And now you'll live right next to people. Nobody even talks or introduces themselves. Yeah. And this is kind of sad. I, I kind of miss, like, when my, my parents were like reminiscing about like things that were happening when they were younger, I was like, oh, I wish that we have that type of community now. Like, I remember when I was a kid, like I grew up in Brooklyn and I would go like hang out with my friends or whatever. And everyone knows each other in that neighborhood. Right. I'll hang out with a guy and someone would go like the lady from the grocery store will go to my mom and be like, still you hang out with this guy. <laughs> and mom's like, who, how does he look like? And she's like, yeah, that's like my daughter's best friend. <laughs> and I was like, mm. my mom, I would come home and I was like, hey, so uh, so and so said you were hanging out with Ronnie today. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you she know, thought she, was getting you, she thought she was getting you in trouble, or maybe, you know, some sometimes they think they're helping. You know, they think sometimes. that's a that's that's not helping you, but maybe helping your mother. <laughs> 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 so yeah. so then you you had such a big role on Woo Assassins and you were awesome in it. Was, that was we that was one of the shows we binged during the nonsense that uh, you know that stretched out to like two years. <laughs> I'm glad I kept you entertained for a little bit. <laughs> you did, you did. Did so with that one in Gotham, all that stuff. Did you have to go through any type of training for the shows? Um, Gotham, we didn't really have a lot of training. Is the days you know that we were holding guns there would be a, an expert there you know make sure yeah hey, this is how you should have gone blah 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 and i was like, oh i've shot guns before and he was like great so now let's check these bullets you know make sure you know every mm -hmm. take and make sure that you know hey these are blanks we're putting in and these are there's a little bit of firepower than these make sure you're nowhere near people when you fire this it'll create a spark for the gun and they're like this will create the pop 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 sound so that was like you know that's the training probably like not even like a couple of hours, you know, on Gotham. Yeah. Like always yeah. check the guns, right? Check the guns, check the guns. That's and good. Assessment, we uh, we did train, actually trained for quite a bit. And we did a bunch of different like types of fight scenes and they all end up getting cut out before we can even shoot it. They're like, we don't have time. So let's cut that out. But, um, oh man. That's disappointing. I'd be disappointed at that. I'd be no. like, can we shoot one of them? Just put one of them in. Oh, yeah, and I have one one fight scene with Tommy Fal uh, Flanagan. And then yep. I was supposed to have, like, multiple fight scenes with Eco. Oh, that would have been great. And I was so ready, and he was so ready. I'm like, I'm going to kick your butt. I was like, can't wait to tell people I kick Eco. Why is his butt? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we never got to shoot any of them. Yeah, that's terrible. Were you, were you athletic growing up? Did you play any sports? Uh, I played handball, which is a very New Yorker thing. I was a racquetball then, guy. That's basically handball with, with a racket. With a racket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you played it with other people that were using their hands and you played with the racket? No, I've only played with other racquetballers, but I've watched people play handball. It looks, uh, it actually looks pretty fun. I bet it stings a little bit, though. Oh, yeah, I have uh, cracked my palm multiple times. Uh, Ouch. I have like... I played it in, a, I was in like a varsity team in, in high school. And then I've taken off my glove and be like, oh, I'm, I'm bleeding, guys. It's like cracked. A lot. Wow. <laughs> I cracked. Yeah, get a racket. Well, it's, it makes you stronger, you know? It does make you stronger. Although I, I played, you know, just, um, I don't know. They, they'd have competitions in college. So I'd play in those. And more than once, I smacked myself right in the face and just busted my face up with the racket. Because you oh, go in no. to try to swing kind of close and you just whack. Oh, just, oh, oh. more I've than once. I've ball a couple of times when you like miss or like you're like not paying attention and the ball just go. Whoop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we weren't athletic. Maybe we just pretend to be so like we look cool. Like hey, <laughs> like we say, yeah, I played this, but maybe. 
did we really, or were we just out there beating ourselves up? <laughs> so yeah, I did that like growing up, like I played handball and then, um, then I started training in like martial arts, like maybe 10 years ago or so. Um, what, uh, what's your, what's your discipline? What, what kind of martial arts are you doing? Chinese Kung Fu. Um, I mean, I, nice. I'm not as like badass as most of these people out there. I, I do it for fun, you know, and like trying to, trying to be, trying to look cool. So, um, I train in like Shaolin form and like tiger forms. Well, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And also would come in handy with acting. Yeah. And say, you at least know some of the movements if you needed to do it. Yeah. With Iron Fist. I mean, they're like, can you show us? a couple of moves I'm like yeah yeah sure I did that and then I got on set and I was like well you guys are like really badass all the stunt guys I'm like whoa this is really cool I don't know if I can do that <laughs> <laughs> it was like yeah <laughs> you guys are yeah. awesome yeah that that's pretty cool I yeah that's uh that's not uh, too bad are you training on your own or are you taking classes somewhere oh I took classes uh, my sifu his name is Takwa Ng so he's out yeah. in Chinatown so I used to take classes with him, but since the pandemic, I haven't gone back. Yeah, yeah, I know. We all went through some of that, I think. It threw everything off. Now we have to get back to what we were doing before. Yes. Hopefully. Safely. Safely. <laughs> Hopefully. So my my mother said to me, I always play this game where I go around to the family, and I'm like, where have you seen this person before? So my mother was a big Equalizer fan from – the old show. So she started watching the new show. Now, I, I would tell you, she prefers the old one because, you know, she's older. But she said you did a very nice job on there, on the episode. So I haven't seen that one. But, yeah, she's seen it. She's seen it. Mom does pretty good. If I show her a picture, of, if I tell her a name, she has no clue. If I show her a picture, she can usually remember. Your mom's really good then. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. I was only on one episode, and I'm glad I – uh made an impact in your mom's head so she yeah yeah yeah. she she remembered she remembered like didn't even hesitate i like showed her and she's like equalizer i'm like okay i looked it up and i was like she was right (laughs) but now you tell me if i'm right because i'm not sure this was right did you do like an aquafina show episode oh yeah yeah i did a Nora from Queens and season one. Yeah, Nora from Queens. I watched that show and I'm like, I think maybe you did one. What was, remind me what the part was because that's what I was trying, like I had the picture of you in my head, but I was like, I may not even be right. So what was the role? Did you watch season one? Um, I did. the last episode of season one when she goes to China and I'm like the girl with the straight bangs and we're like, hello, welcome to China. (laughs) All right. Yeah, I know exactly who you are. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I really enjoyed that show. That was another uh, pandemic uh, binge. Oh, yeah, I love that show. Everyone on that show is so much fun. And, like, I love, like, the positive energy. and everything. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I know. And, and, and you're right. Everybody on the show, hilarious. Yeah. Just, just really, really good. And, and good acting. I, I thought it was really well done. Enjoyed that. All right. So the new movie, New York Minute, in a New York Minute. In a New York Minute. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about this one. What's what's your role in it? What's the movie about? So uh, I play a character named Nina. And uh, in the movie, it's three storylines of three Asian female living in New York City. And like um, their struggles and, and things that they're going through. And it all got linked by uh, a pregnancy test and how each character used a pregnancy test to kind of got to like where in a way they want in life or like made a, a life decision off of like a pregnancy test the same one and it's the, the same out. pregnancy test the same pregnancy test um, well, how does that work you have to watch the movie <laughs> the trailer looked really good i i watched the uh, trailer and i i like the movies that have the seemingly unconnected stories that connect i think those are are always uh always fun to watch so who's in it with you who else is uh, in the movie so uh, so my in my my section it's me and um the guy that plays my boyfriend his name is real name's roger he plays ian um the first storyline has amy chang jay shin and uh there's a cameo made by jen pei pei do you know who she is jen pei pei no tell me watch crafting tiger and hidden dragons 
Of course. You know the Jade Fox, the older lady that like. Yes. That's her. She made oh. a cameo. That's a that's yeah. a pretty big name then. Yeah, yo, I was there that day. I don't have a scene with her, but I was like, I am a fan of yours since yeah, I was yeah. a kid. And then I was like, should I tell her I, like I'm a fan of yours since I was a kid? Yes, because, you should. You know, because then like would it make her feel like she's old? And I was like, I don't know if like the right thing to do. And and her daughter is a friend of mine. And I was like, I don't know how to say hi to your mom. I feel like I feel like uh should I say hi auntie or should I say like Miss Miss Chang? I don't like I don't know what to do. And she's like, just go say hi. <laughs> well, so what what did you do? Did you did you blow it or did you do a good job? I, I knocked and I was like, hi. I was like, I'm Celia Auntie. And then she was like, oh yeah, I heard so much about you from my daughter. And her other daughter was with her. And she's like, oh yeah, we hung out in like Austin, right? I'm like, yes, we did. And then I was like, I don't know what else. And she's like, do you know what uh, good Broadway shows? And I was like, yeah, I can tell you about Broadway shows. And yeah. I was like, I kind of want to nerd out on like her films. But I was like, ah, I probably shouldn't do that. No, you totally should have. Of course, <laughs> I say that as somebody that would be a terrible actor. And that's why I'd run into people and I'd be, I'd just fan out and they'd be like, get this guy away from me. <laughs> Trying to act over no. here. Now you, you, you look like you have good, good vibes and you don't look creepy at all. So I don't think people would feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all I'm no going problem. for. Good vibes, no creepy. <laughs> and uh, so the third storyline stars Moody Lynn, who was in Mortal Kombat. He was also in Power Rangers. Um, yeah, big and, fan of his. Yeah, really, really good actor. And uh, Liu Yi, who's uh, who's the, the main female in that storyline. So it's the six of us, or seven and of that's us. A, that's a pretty good cast. Now, I will say that I saw Annie Chang, and it was a different Annie Chang than, than what I was thinking. You know, I, I had an interview with Annie Chang that was on um, Peacemaker. She's on Super Pumped right now. And then I saw this. I was like, oh, she's doing another movie. I'll have to I'll have to holler. But then I looked. It was a different Annie Chang. So, so I'm Chang. sure. Huh? It's Amy Chang. Oh, it's Amy Chang. OK, yeah, well, there you go. There you go. There, there was uh, the error. There was the error. So I was like, hmm. But but I from what I've seen on the trailer, she's really good really good yeah. yeah it looks like a really strong cast and you even though it's just a short like um small uh like showing on the on the uh, trailer it it looks like there's good rapport between the actors if you, i mean have you ever seen a show or a movie where it doesn't look like they really fit together you know you're like something's off but it didn't feel that way in this one. It looked like it was really well connected. Was the set like that? Yes, I mean, like um, Andy, uh, Ma Mandy, who's the director, right? and she always want to make sure that you know we have we built a rapport. But Roger and I, we actually, you know, all three girls known each other prior to this film. So I've known Amy, I've known Leo Yi before working on this film. Yeah. Uh, Roger, I met on the film who plays my boyfriend, and we bonded over sing disney songs on set so that's pretty awesome what was your song really, really cold, yes there'll be really really cold days where we're like oh my god it's so cold outside it's freezing and then they call cut and then both roger and i will be like a whole new world no like action okay cool the scene, 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 cut. Akuna Matata. <laughs> i like that yeah keep it light on set you're having and plus you're building rapport that's pretty good yeah we're like, oh man, it's such a dramatic part. And then if you just see like behind the scenes of how goofy both Roger and I was the whole time. <laughs> do they did they do outtakes? Like they should stick those at the end. That would be that would be interesting to find out if like they were shooting us like singing and stuff. But yeah, they yeah it, it was just like a good vibe. You know, I really believe in like, you know, everyone working together as a team. And for this film, definitely. You know, because it's a it's a it's an indie film, right? So we don't have like all the production value and all the money, but everyone worked hard and put in their creativity in it. And I feel like you know we did a. I'm pretty proud of this project, and Mandy did a great job. First time director on a feature, you know. Yeah. And she wrote the script, and she hired a mostly a female crew. So like you know our DP Mago Lynn, she's female. Like you know costume designer Lisa, you know uh, our producer Rachel. And um, 
our set designers, you're all female, mostly mostly female leading uh, department heads. And that's and I think that's pretty exciting. And that's something that's really changed over the last few years. I mean, it, you, you you would think it'd been going on for a while, but it really hasn't. It's really been the last several years that we've seen, you know, those changes in not just the cast, but the people behind the scenes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, again, maybe we're just slowly, you know, brainwashing people and changing their mind, hopefully giving the world more empathy and love and, you know, care one about another more, you know? Yeah, you know? I hope so, because we're. I, I love I love when you get um, different perspectives in the writing, you know, so you start seeing people in a different way um, through what they've written. I, I think that's that's really neat. And it's it's nice to see that uh, diversity. Yeah, definitely. I was saying like, you know, even though the three storylines are Asian based, right? Like yeah. Asian females. But if you can just pluck these characters out, right? And then insert anyone of any like person of color, you know, Caucasian, whatever, Black, Hispanic, we all go through these kind of scenarios in life. Yeah. So right. It's more about a story of life rather than, you know, oh, it's an Asian storyline or it's, that's not. It's a storyline of human and behavior and things that happens. That's just yeah, life. I think that's a terrific way to look at it. So when did when did you film it? Were you filming it before the pandemic, during the pandemic? When did you film it? We actually filmed this a while ago. So it was before the pandemic. It was, yes. uh, it was actually before I did Wool Assassins. Oh, so it's been a while back. Oh, yeah, definitely. Indie films, you know, like I'm so proud of the film that now I guess distribution. We went through a bunch of film festivals in 2019 into like 20, early 2020. So the film won a bunch of like awards in the film festival circuit. And now finally the public gets to see it. I mean, there's yeah, two it comes out there. May 3rd. May 3rd on like all VOD platforms. I know we're going to do it. Um, so we're going to do it in studio. So we, we've got enough space where we can have 15 to 20 people in the studio and we're going to watch it. That'll be our, we like to do the little premiere. So we'll do that in studio. Nice. Like, let me know what you think about it afterwards. Oh, I will. I mean, I'm pretty excited about it because it's um, this normally when we do the in studio stuff, it's either nerdy or maybe a little scary. But this one, this one's kind of like a date night type of movie. So we're going to have yeah. all the couples, all the couples in. So it should be, it should be fun. Oh, I wonder what the couples think and which couples do they like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to let you know. I'll let you know. I'll try to take some pictures and send them your yeah. way. Cause that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. I, we really, uh, really enjoyed it when we were looking for, we, when we first started the podcast, we were just doing it uh, out of bedroom, me and my son, my son does all the hard stuff, you know, the editing and, Everything, all I do is show up and talk. He does all the stuff. But we were just in a bedroom. And we we're little, when we wanted to get a studio, we we're like, well, we got to have a space to put up a big TV and chair so we can, you know, do that type of thing. So there we go. Let me ask you, do you have a good sound system too? Well, our sound system needs a little bit of work. And I and this is what happened. This is what happened. So I had the I had the TV. I was pretty happy with it, but it wasn't loud enough. Especially like my father struggles with his hearing. So it wasn't loud enough. So my brother says, I have a sound system that you can have because he had a, um, he was living in DC and had a theater in his house, you know, put oh, in a theater. So he's like, I'm going to bring you a sound system. I was like, all right, all right. Well, he, it, when it got there, it looked really cool. It weighed like 500 pounds, but it looked really cool. And he hooks it all up and says it's ready to go so i was like okay all right first time i turned it on it just blew out all the lights just blew them all out so i had to i had to take all that apart and since then we have got like a a sound we call it the little sound boards or what not sound bar sound bar mm -hmm. so it's better but it's not to where we want it yet yeah, that, was a, that was like a long like way to say atmos, so you can feel you know yeah, we, which is what I think what he was setting up was supposed to be. But shame on me for not checking it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he set it up and he's like, all right, I'm out of here. I was like, 
Mm. He's like, how'd that sound system work? And I was like, well, <laughs> we had to replace all of the light bulbs. <laughs> so we're getting there slowly. <laughs> now, I'm really excited. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Have you ever driven through West Virginia? Have you ever been out this way? I, I'm trying to think of like, I've been to Virginia for sure. I just don't remember. Was it like West Virginia or not? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty similar. You know, the, it's beautiful, especially if you go in the fall when the leaves are changing, but that's what you need a, you need to take a road trip. It's about eight hours from New York. And then, and then we'll do a, like a live interview and, and I don't know, we'll watch, we'll watch a movie, but we'll get, wait till we get a better sound system. Okay. Good deal. <laughs> I'm gonna go in and be expert judging my turn. What kind of sound mm -hmm. system? How sound yeah. systems this guy have? Because yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not happy. I'd, I'd be lying if I said I was happy with it. It's not bad now. It's definitely better. Not what I want. Yeah. Yes, you gotta, you gotta get that 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 whole setup. You I, have to. During the pandemic, I just kept upgrading things, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should stop. And I was like, mommy, to get more stuff. <laughs> I mean, what else was there to do if you could find stuff that wasn't trapped, you know, on a boat that was turned sideways in a canal somewhere? Well, I was like, hey, you know what? I can't go to the movies right now and I want to have that experience. Let me buy a bigger TV. Okay, cool. Let me get a sound system. Oh, cool. Now let me get that. Let me get that. Mm. I know. Yeah, I it was a good time to upgrade. Have, have you been to, to the movies since? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um the last film I saw, I think, was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Have you seen it yet? Oh, no, but I want to see that. I, I I have it on good authority. It's very good. It's really good. But you need to watch it in a New York minute first, and then you should watch Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this will, in a New York minute, is our next movie. But I do <laughs> want to go see that one. And I also want to see uh, Nicolas Cage has a new movie out playing oh, a I version of himself. Too. Oh, how was it? It's it's a lot of fun. The, yes. It's an incredibly massive talent. I think that's the name of the Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's like, you know what? I was like, I haven't seen Nick Cage in like a blockbuster in a while. And I was like, yeah. this is definitely a blockbuster for Nick Cage. And it's funny. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one too. So that's on the, that's on the I The last one, I saw Morbius. I went, because I always see the geeky movies. I saw that one. And it was just okay. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that. It was one just yet. okay. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it was like, it was one that you probably, it probably should have just been a TV movie. If you saw it on Disney or something, you'd have probably said, well, that was pretty good. But in a theater, I, I don't know. Just okay. Hmm. I don't know why, but just okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken it down a movie rabbit hole. It's okay. <laughs> so in a New York minute, May the 3rd, what, what does your character do in the movie? So, uh, I play a character named Nina, and in the story, you see that she's an escort at night, and at okay. day, she's actually, like, helping her uh, family, uh, you know, playing, paying for her dad's medical bills, and she has a stepmother, almost like a, a Cinderella-type story where she never found her Prince Charming, per se, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to ruin this for you, but... Um, like her stepmom basically was saying that she's not as good as her stepbrother, her half brother at all. Like, you know, making comparison. And they don't know that she works as an escort at night, but that's the way how she earns her money and actually have money to pay for her dad's medical bills. And she's saving money to leave the situation at home. That's that's a lot. That's a I, I already feel bad for her. <laughs> and then she meets, you know, a guy that she falls in love with, uh, who Roger plays is Ian, and he provides her with like a steady lifestyle and be like, come with me. But I am just going to end it there so you guys can watch the film. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Don't give too much. Although, did she meet, does she meet Roger in her night job or like another time? Or her night job. Okay. All right. All right. That sounds that makes it. I'm kind of interested in that now. That's that sounds like yeah, an interesting I story. I can't wait for you to see it. I mean, uh, so eat. There's three stories line. There's three storylines, and every storyline deals with a, a a different like life crisis. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, I told you, I, I'm interested in, in the connection. I think that'll be really, uh, really neat. And it, and I think it's so interesting that stuff that's coming out now was record. It's been, it's like we paused things for two years and then now the stuff's starting to, to come out. Was that like, when you look back on it, you know, has, does it feel like it was that long ago? You know, have your looks changed? Does it, you know what I mean? Does it, do you look at yourself and go, well, I was really young there. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? You got to watch the film and, and let me know. Cause sometimes like looking at yourself, you have like, it's hard to tell. It's, it's hard to tell. I'm like, like sometimes I'm like, do I have gray hair now? Like, I'm not sure. Like, do I look older? I don't know anymore guys. Someone tell me. Yeah, no, I will. I'll let you know. I mean, it's not that long ago, but a lot's changed since then. Yes. It's been a really stressful two years. And yes. I to compare. But now we're out of it. Kind of, right? I mean, hopefully. We're out, okay. I should I should say now we're out. We're not really out of it. Yeah. We seem to be out back in it, but it's still there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's I like agree. everybody just decided, okay, we're done. We're just we're taking our chances. We're going out. <laughs> but it's still there. I mean, if you want to, if you want to be safe and stay at home, you know, on May 3rd, you can watch in a New York minute on VOD. Oh man, I'm really good. With that's right. That's right. Or you can come to our studio and we'll spread out. Yeah. You know, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll only have, you know, like 15 in, but we'll spread them out. We'll do the six feet thing. <laughs> no shared popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Celia, thank you so much. This has just been so much fun. I, I'm such a fan of yours. I think you're such a, especially somebody that came to it kind of late. You're really good. Thank you so much, Michael. Fingers crossed that, uh, you know, I keep working. Pray for me. <laughs> you will. I know we're going to see you in something really big soon. Hopefully a superhero movie. That's what I like. Oh, thank you. I, I wish. Put that Put that energy out I'm there. I'm putting it know? out there. But now, and, and it needs to be like, with a power you can be a villain or a superhero either one but need, you need a power i need a power i mean in life i'm trying to like hone this power you know trying to change the world at one film at a time and that's a good power that's a pretty good power i don't know if i'd watch it in a movie but that's a good power <laughs> in life it's a good power <laughs> it's, in life it's a good power i don't in, in a movie maybe oh i did want to ask you before you go um you write a little bit, I think, right? You've uh, done some write. short films. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I write and I direct it a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Is that something that you would like to do in the future? Do you have, you know, aspirations to get behind the camera at some point? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like I was telling you, you know, trying to change the world one film at a time. I can't only do it as an actor. I yes. like, uh, if I get to tell stories and things that I, I feel passionate about, I'll have to write it, right? Well, yeah, I'm not a good writer, but I have to hire a writer and I work with a writer, you know, to write it. Um, I'm actually trying to put a project together right now. I have two projects. We'll see where it goes and fingers crossed. Well, that was my next question. So anything else that you're working on that we can kind of keep an eye out for? Uh, you know, personally, on like the creative side, I'm doing two projects and we'll see where that goes. If it comes out or it gets bought or something, I'll let you know. All um, right. But What's the genres? <laughs> Uh, I have a horror that I'm putting together. Oh, nice. And I have Are you the together. killer? Actually, I don't, I didn't write it with me in mind for anything. So I don't oh. know if I'll, if I'll even be in the film. But okay, I just, okay. Part that I wanted to tell. Because um, I want like, I love horror films with a historical backing. So then it can freak you out because you can go look for stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. So that's like one project I'm working on and, uh, and right now, I'm currently filming a rom-com. Um, nice. It's with a bunch of uh, Phil Am stars. Uh, do you know Dante Bosco? That name's familiar. What what is what have they been in? Did you watch the Goonies? He's Rufio. Oh my gosh! Yes, yes. Oh, that's so amazing. He's, yeah, I've so only seen the lead. Goonies like fifty times. Yes, of course. <laughs> so he's the lead in it and it's a rom-com about like uh you know his relationship with his wife and uh, i play the wife's best friend that's exciting yeah, 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 it yeah. Has a, you know, 
Dante's in it, and then um, Paolo, who was uh, Prince Charming and Brandy Cinderella. Yeah. I was like, we are like two of the biggest like Phil Am stars. A lot of people say show. that's the best Cinderella. Yeah, I, I uh, don't don't judge me. I don't think I've watched that or I've watched it. I don't remember. My uh, my oldest was at the right age when that one came out, so we watched it a bunch, a bunch. So really good, really good. Yeah, and so he's, good. he's in this film, and uh, yeah, we'll see. It should come out. Hopefully next year. Yeah, that's exciting. What's uh, what's the name of that one? It's called. I think this is the name already. It's called Asian Persuasion. Asian Persuasion. Oh yeah, I got I got to keep an eye out for that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really exciting. That's that's great. Okay, so the last thing before we wrap up, um, where can I find you on social media, or where can our viewers, listeners, find you on social media? Um, you can just follow me. I'm on I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I have a Snapchat, guys. I don't really, I'm not good with Snapchat or, or TikTok as well. Yes, that's the if thing. you can TikTok. figure those two out, come and help me. <laughs> it's all the same handles, just at it's Celia out I T S C E L I A A U. Yeah, yeah, I found you on Instagram pretty easy. That was that Instagram's the easy one, I think. Go there, boom. Yeah, and, yeah I can you know, right kind of learn like on TikTok is like sometimes when I'm on set and there's videos of me and my castmates singing along to like random songs or lip singing and like there's some fight clips that i posted up there so well, oh, there you go. yeah deleted, deleted scenes from wuss asses or the scenes that we never shot that we we planned out i think i posted some of those videos there oh yeah i gotta find that all right okay i'll find you on tiktok too then yeah you you would seem to be talented enough you'd have things to do plus you dance a little bit which is all the thing on tiktok uh, I am a terrible dancer, but I did dance on like some music videos when I first started. But, uh, Don't you think you need to get those videos and put the little clip up beside you and then see if you can still do the to move like that? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what everybody you know, like, does. Dancer moves in like a very smooth way and martial artists move in like a very like stoic way. Yeah. And I realized that if I try to dance right now, it looks like I'm trying to like fight someone. That, that's actually, I would watch that. <laughs> we need to get your videos. So it's you dancing. And then I'll try to recreate the dance. Oh my God. Yes. Let's do that. You know what? I need you to recreate. You should, uh, you know, watch the film and then recreate some of the scenes of me being really girly and stuff. We want a channel to succeed. <laughs> what do you mean? It might go viral. It could. It probably would. It would be terrible. Yes. I, okay. I'm on board with that. Let's do it. <laughs> There's nothing could possibly go wrong with this idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Celia, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. You have to come back. You got to come back in a few months so we can talk about some of the other stuff. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me. And this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for yeah. supporting the movie. That means a lot because like I was saying, it's a it's an indie film and we need as much support as we can get. Yeah, we want it to, to catch on and, and get bigger and bigger. Yes. We might get a In a New York Minute 2, In a New York Minute yeah, too. <laughs> that, would, that would be interesting. I can't wait until you, if what you will think afterwards that there should be a two in the film. After. Well, you could do the same idea maybe with different people. Oh, yep. That's true. For sure. Yeah. Make it a, a series. Or you could bring back the same cast, but put them in different roles. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, man. I would love that. I'd watch that. There I'd you go. Play like different characters and stuff that that is just i've been talking this about this a lot it's like orphan black have you seen that show i love orphan black yeah i love that show and to be able to play all these characters whew. yeah it would confuse me but I'm, you would be great oh i would be confused too but i would try to yeah, yeah i think you could do it yeah that's an amazing show love that show yeah. well thank you so much Celia. this has been fun we'll uh We'll talk more. Thank you, Michael.
<laughs> okay, hold on one second. That was that was a lot of fun for me. I'm a big fan of uh, Celia's, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. I was all over the place. I don't know what was the matter with me. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but hopefully it came across uh, well. I think she's such a, a talented actress, and I, I've loved her and just everything I've seen her in. And I hope uh, you will take the time on May the 3rd to watch In the New York Minute. Um, definitely check that out. Look it up and, and watch the uh, trailer. I think uh, I think you'll be hooked. Um, it's uh, it looks really good, and she's so good in it. If you liked uh, Wu Assassin, she was so terrific in that. And the one I didn't mention that I meant to, she was in Lodge Forty Nine, which I thought was kind of an underrated show, but she was in a bunch of those um, and really good, really good in that. Um, and then. She was also did an episode of Madam Secretary, so there was a couple there that I uh, I didn't get to. But she's such a such a great actress. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again this week. Definitely don't take that uh, for granted. I appreciate it so much. If you haven't done so yet, we could definitely use the help on our YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod. If you would consider subscribing, it would really mean a lot to me. Um, you can find all four hundred or so episodes, audio and video on our YouTube channel, on our website, meistercon.com. Um, if we're doing anything in studio, if we're going on location, if we're covering a convention, all that will be on the website, meistercon.com. So definitely check that out. Thank you guys so, so much again. Until next time, I've got to, I've got to sign off. I'm, I'm a, I'm a mess tonight. <laughs> Till next time, everybody.